Hey guys, what's up, what's it going? My name is Rob and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be showcasing to you guys my Wealth Support Trade Dividend Growth Portfolio. In today's video, it's gonna be a bit of a long one, but I'm gonna be showing you guys the dividend income. I'll give you guys an update on all my entire portfolios. I'll show you guys the total return of all my stocks. I'll show you guys what stocks I bought for the month. And I'll show you guys what stocks inside my portfolio are actually increasing their dividends for the month of March. So once again, it's gonna be a long video, but we're gonna be doing a deep dive in today's video. I'll show you guys everything on there. Everything is gonna be 100% transparent. And if you guys enjoyed this video, and you guys wanna see more content like this that I do on this channel, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. All right, let's just jump jump inside the video. Let's jump inside the portfolio and let's see how things are doing. All right, so the first part of the video we'll be talking about is the quick little portfolio update of our stock portfolios. Um, so we'll cover the Wealth Super Trade accounts really quickly, and then I'll give you guys a bird's eye view of all the accounts that we have. So the first ones here are on my Wealth Super Trade portfolio. We have my uh, two accounts here, and the markets did see a bit of a jump up um, for the end of Friday. It's actually Saturday, I think Saturday, Sunday, or Sunday at the time of doing this video. So you guys will probably see this around Sunday afternoon or so, or Sunday evening. Um, but the U.S. markets to take a big jump up, and we'll talk about that. And you'll actually see this reflect pretty good in our portfolios, especially our TFSA. So the TFSA is our largest account here. We have $104,000, um, just approach 105. So we have that maxed out for the year. And I've been building this account um, since about 2019. I've been aggressively trying to put as much money as I can in here. So the one-day return for Friday was plus one whole entire percent. Um, and again, a lot of this coming from those U.S. stocks. And also, um, you know, the overall market did see a bit of a jump up, so that definitely helped out as well. Um, the one-week return is plus 2%, um, so that's a nice little jump there. One-month return is still negative one. Three-month return is plus five, so we're kind of trending that way. Um, One-year return is sent out negative four. So if we take a big uh, kind of screen out here, and step back a bit, we can see that, you know, 2022 was a bit of a, a drop overall. And then starting in about January, uh, start of this year, we did see a bit of a jump up. We can see like actually a pretty steady rise here um, with the account as well as my contributions here. Like my, my net deposits is a black line here at the bottom. We can see that it was pretty aggressive with these, but nonetheless, the actual portfolio value is just value is just steadily increasing because the markets did go up and you know those dividends and everything just kind of compounds and grows all-time return for our tfsa is double digits back again uh, about 10 percent which is nine thousand seven hundred thirty dollars so it's doing pretty good there the uh, personal account which is more focused on dividend stocks uh, we made some big changes to this account this year um, i did transfer a big chunk of my personal account into my tfsa to max it out and I'm not too sure exactly what I'm gonna do with the rest for this year, but I'm probably just gonna keep it where it is right now and just reinvest those dividends. Um, but this one is kinda of gonna be about the same. 1% uh, gain for Friday, one month return is negative 1%, one year return is negative seven, and then all time, the personal account is still at 5%. Once again, we see a big drop here. This is because I took out a big chunk of money to put inside the TFSA. So obviously, like we didn't see a big drop off there. It's just uh, me withdrawing the money there um, from the personal account back into my TFSA. And to zoom out and give you guys a bird's eye view of all of our accounts, I'm using this tracker called Track Your Dividends. This is just a way for me to track all of our portfolios together uh, since it's just easier to do this way. I do have um, a plan in the future over the next month or couple months to actually switch things to a different tracker, but I'll let you guys know how things are going with that. Uh, it's kind of in the works right now. But we have $131,000, just under $132,000, and uh, we can see a big jump up about $2,599. Um, over the past little while here. Uh, portfolio yield of all of our portfolios together is 3.84%, so that's just under 4%, and our yield and cost is shitting about 3.92%, so we're trying, we're starting to get that positive gain in the yield of cost, and this is basically when the mar stock markets grow, our yield and cost will grow because, um, you know, our, we bought those stocks at lower yields, and then the markets go up and we get a higher yield on cost, uh, and it just keeps kind of compounding and growing. Um, annual income is $5,062, so we make about $5,000 a year, uh, the bulk of that tax-free since most of the money is in TFSAs. Uh, the plan is to eventually get all of our money in our TFSAs would be tax-free, but that's about $400 or so, four to $500 a month, give or take, um, if you want to do it by month. And here's the different accounts that we have here. So the first account that I'm going to cover is going to be the ESOP. Um, this is my uh, employer match account where my employer matches me. Uh, basically any deposits I do. It's a basically free money uh, on my end. I get a 25% gain on whatever I put in just by default plus the dividends plus the stock growth. So it's a pretty sweet deal, uh, especially for a part-time job. And this is with Loblaws Companies. So I have about $900 in here. I just recently updated this. Uh, we are up about $50 inside that account. So it's doing pretty good. Annual income obviously is pretty low at $12. Uh, but this is a growth-based company and this is gonna get more growth over time. But, you know, those dividends are going to compound and grow as well. We covered my personal account already. So we'll jump over to my fiance's TFSA. 
and this account is very similar to um, my TFSA, just basically my TFSA without all the individual stocks, just the major ETFs. So portfolio yield about 3.43%, annual income about $407. And once again, our goal really for this year, toward the end of this year, as well as next year, is to kind of really help grow this account since there's a lot of room here. Uh, I think we have about $50,000 max we can put in there uh, for this year. So there's tons of room here. And you know we wanna take advantage of those tax-free benefits, but we have HYLD, VDY, and VFB. So a nice pretty mix there, uh, sort of similar to what I have, to what I have just without the, um, uh, without the individual stocks here. And if we do a quick summary here, once again, you guys can see this stuff. If you guys wanna see all my portfolios, um, you guys wanna see all my stocks and kind of, um, be notified when I do trades and, and kind of go at your own pace and check out my stocks. Check out the link to Blossom. There's a link in the description of this video. All my portfolio, everything is 100% free for you guys to access on there uh, 24 hours a day. So if you guys want to kind of do a deeper dive on your own, definitely check that out. Next up a video here, we'll cover the dividend income really quickly. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of go over here some of the older months so you guys can see. I like to kind of basically look back and reflect on the yearly income. So uh, we first started this portfolio in January of 2020. So first month, 44 cents in dividends. Uh, 12 months later, $53 in dividends. Um, another 12 months later, so that'd be like about year two or so, $167 in dividends. And keep in mind guys, I was this is a very aggressive period of time. I was basically throwing as much money as I could out my portfolio, hence why it was growing so fast. Um, you know, month number 36, which is three year mark, $230 a month in dividends. And um, well obviously in year number, uh, I guess it'd be year number four. We're just starting year number four with the portfolio. Um, we can see March, uh, dividends for March was $293, so just under $300, which is pretty good considering um, most of the time we'd kind of hit around 200 to 250 on an average month. And then every quarterly uh, quarter, we get a, a big dividend chunk. In fact, I think we have a lot of dividends coming up for this quarter because I have a lot of companies paying up in April. Uh, but March, I made $266 in dividends for my portfolio. And then my fiance made two, $27. And once again, added together that 293 And total dividends is 5,761. So a nice good chunk of cash there. And as you guys know, I like to be transparent about everything on this channel and I like to show you guys basically the fine details of everything. So here's the dividend payments for the month of March. We'll kind of go through these really quickly so you guys can see the actual companies that are paying me dividends. And once again, like a lot of these payments are small little dollar amounts, but they all add up together to kind of get that total um, monthly income. So it's, it's kind of surprising. Like you see some payments like Canadian Tire paid us a dividend $2. We got $10 from Fortis, $21 from VDY another $113 in VDY, and then we got our covered calls like HYLD gave us $16, $7 from HDIV, another $65 from HYLD and my TFSA. But all these kind of payments just kind of add up and grow uh, grow the account over time. Once again, some more from HDIV. We did get a dividend from um, Severia Corp, but I did recently sell that stock um, and basically just put it into my ETFs. Uh, Manulife gave us a nice little dividend of $14. And then we have CNR, XEI, XEI, our new holding, which I'll talk about later on in the video. And then again, some more CNR dividends there. So, you know, there's small amounts, but they add up over time. And those are the actual dividend payments that I got for my stocks. And here's a quick little update on the upcoming dividends to give you guys a quick little bird's eye view. I like to kind of check this uh, just to kind of see what's going on for each month. So this will kind of give us an idea of uh, basically our monthly schedule for the rest of the year. Uh, again, this doesn't really include, you know, um, money compounding and growing. It's just going to give you guys an idea of what I'm getting uh, basically now if nothing was to change. Um, but of course, you know, we're going to be putting more money. We're going to be reinvesting those dividends. Those dividends are going to increase. In fact, towards the end of the video, I'll give you guys an update on all my stocks that actually did, div did do dividend increases. And I was actually quite surprised. There's actually quite a few stocks this month that did increase their dividends. Uh, but anyways, we have April. So here's the stocks for April. Um, so I'm just going to zoom in here so you guys can see this a little bit better. Um, so AQN is giving us a dividend of $35. ATT $10, which is pretty sweet. Um, actually pretty high dividend for a, a alimentation crew star since it's such a low dividend company but again lots of dividend growth with that company and we have bought a few more shares cnq giving us dividend of two two dollars and 86 cents hdiv ten dollars hyld you can see you know that those covered calls are starting to really add up you know i really don't hold a lot i think i hold about uh somewhere around ten to eleven thousand dollars in hyld but it's already giving us $157 in monthly income that's tax-free. So that's the benefit there. Um, I finally added Loblaw in here. I got to link it together with this one as well as Wealthica, which we'll show you guys later on in the video. Um, but there was some issues, but I'll, I'll kind of talk about that. Um, we have Telus giving us a dividend of $27, TD $63, VDY, and then we also will be getting a dividend from VFV. So we'll probably get around five to $600 or so for total dividends. So we might actually hit even a new high for dividends for the month of April, which is gonna be pretty exciting.
So one of, the, one of the big things I like to focus on is transparency and keep along with that trend. I'll show you guys all the buys that I made for March. And once again, guys, if you guys want to kind of dive in and see all these um, buys, check out my account on Blossom. It is linked to my brokerages, my brokerage uh, Wealth Simple, and all my other ones. And this is my brokerage right here. So you guys can see this is 100% legit. I'm all about transparency. Everything on there is linked. It's direct. It's directly linked. So every anytime I buy a stock, it's on there on Blossom. You guys can see 100% real time. So if you guys want to dive into that and kind of or be notified, definitely follow me on Blossom and check that out. Once again, link in the description of this video. But we guys can see, you guys can see here that I did do lots of buys for March. Most of this stuff was an, just regular stuff I did. I did sell some holdings on my personal account and I stuck this into my TFSA, so big chunk into HYLD. I did buy a lot of AQN and CNR. I was kind of building up those positions. AQN I wanted to take advantage of because obviously it dipped down quite a bit recently and we've seen it jump up quite a bit as, I wouldn't say as expected, but I mean, I still believe with the long-term value of AQN. So that's not really surprising to me, but we'll have to see, wait and see what happens. Um, scoring up here, uh, nothing too crazy. We did buy XEI and the plan with XEI is to buy it with our HYLD or covered call income. Once again, I'll talk about that more when we get into the section where I show you guys the total returns. But more or less, we just kind of bought the same stocks over and over. Once again, I am focusing on growing the covered calls still, so those are the main focus. I did focus a lot on CNR. I did buy the banks, you know, when the banks kind of dipped a little bit for this month, I did buy that. But otherwise, I'm just basically buying into the same stocks and I did reinvest some dividends into, you know, like Manulife and whatnot. So those were kind of those buys. Um, I did buy some HDIV as well as some HYLD, but you know, those are the main focus for this month. Nothing crazy, nothing um, nothing exciting. Uh, main focuses was I, I transferred the money from the personal account to the TFSA to buy HYLD. I've been focusing on buying the covered calls to grow the positions. I bought some AQN as well as some TD, and then I bought some random other stocks. Uh, you know, I keep it nice and simple. All my stocks are all good quality buys. They're all good long-term buys. I never really have to worry about that. Uh, they're always gonna be good stocks to buy no matter what's going on in the market. So I like to run my portfolio like that. So it's nice and simple and easy. All right, so here's the fun part of the video that all dividend investors like to focus on, which is the dividend growth. And I was actually surprised. Usually at the end of every month, I like to check my stocks and just see which stocks are growing their dividends since that's such a big part of dividend investing. It doesn't matter you know, if you're focused on long-term yields, higher yields or lower yields or more growth. Dividend growth is always gonna be a big part of things. And as you guys can see in my portfolio, even though I do have some growth stocks, I do have some higher yield dividend stocks, and then I have some covered calls, they all can benefit from dividend increases. So the, the bulk of my portfolio is kind of a mixture of everything, but these dividend increases definitely do help, especially for the smaller accounts and whatnot, and to get some growth. Um, so the first stock we have here, we actually have like one, two, three, four, five stocks that increase their dividends. So I was kind of surprised. I, was, I, didn't, I don't remember seeing any big ones, but kind of when you go through it and you double check it, it's like, oh, hey, there's actually quite a few here. So the first one is CNR. Um, Canadian National Railway. This is more of a dividend growth based company. You know, they got a pretty low yield at 2%, but they have been aggressively growing it quite a bit. We recently seen a dividend increase for March, about 7.85%. So not a huge increase, but a pretty steady one, all things considered. They mostly increased their dividend on a yearly basis. Last year was a 19% growth, so that was a pretty big dividend increase. So I imagine the 8% here is just to be a little bit more conservative to balance that out, because 19% obviously is quite a bit. But nonetheless, that's about 8% dividend increase. So all the, the money that we get from our dividends, we get an 8% increase just by holding the stock. And that's why I love it. Um, Manulife is going to be the next one here. Um, this is once again, this is more of a higher yield company. They're definitely the traditional dividend company, so to speak. Um, I think they have a yield of about five, it's actually 6% right now. So it's a pretty high yield, but they have huge earnings, huge potential. They have tons of room to grow their dividend. So no worries there. And we did see a dividend increase for February slash March of about 10.61%. And this is kind of in line with what they've been doing recently. Pretty steady dividend increases across the board, double digits, 10% in 2023, 12% in 2020. So some pretty solid dividends there. So I'm pretty happy with that. So 10% is nice, uh, especially since it already is a high dividend company. So that, that actually adds to be quite a bit, you know, 10% of uh, five, uh, six percent is like 0.6, I guess. Like it's a, qu it's quite a bit um, for a dividend increase if you're holding the stock. So that's really nice. Uh, POW, Power Corporation Canada, is going to be the next one. Um, small dividend increase here. This has been a company that's been struggling a little bit for stock growth, but it is traditionally a good um, dividend company. Um, I do have a small holding of this, and I do also have it in my ETF, so it's not a big holding. It's a stock I did buy a little bit of, but I'm not too sure if I'm going to buy right now. I kind of just kind of wait and see. But we did see a 6% dividend increase, so that's good. That'll help compounding and get some growth in the long run. So that's always good to see. The next stock we have here is CNQ, and CNQ's been a, on an absolute beast for returns. 
um, if you guys have been paying attention, not just for growth, but for dividends and everything. Like the company is just doing really, really well. Um, 2020, we've seen a dividend increase of 13%, 10% in 2021, 25% in 2021 again. So I guess that's like 35%. Uh, in 22, another massive dividend increase as well. We actually seen one in March and then at the end of the year. So I wonder if we're going to get two this year. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but the company has just seen massive growth, massive increases. I have a small holding. It's not a big holding, but I do have it in my ETFs. So it helps out the ETFs. Has a yield about 4.85%, relatively low payout ratio, all things considered. And we've seen a 6% dividend increase. So a little bit of a smaller one this year. They're kind of probably scaling that back a bit. But we might also see a big one towards the end of the year as well, since they like to tend to do two dividend increases. So we'll kind of see how that goes. But, you know, we've been holding this stock for, I, I think since 2021 or something, as well as in all the ETFs. So it's been pretty significant for us. And um, anybody who's been holding this stock for a long term, I think is doing quite well. Uh, you're probably gonna be pretty happy with that. And the last dividend company is gonna be CTC uh, Canadian Tire. Uh, once again, some pretty big dividend increases. This is a company that surprised me. I didn't know Canadian Tire was a big dividend company, but they actually are. So yield about 4%, payout ratio about 38%, relatively, you know, pretty, pretty good. And then we saw a dividend increase of about 6%. And that was, um, you know, in, in about uh, January was announced, but we didn't get it till like we're going to be getting it, I guess. I guess we already got it, but that would be 6% increase. So a small little increase um, for this year. But once again, last year was some pretty big increases and they did do double double dividend increases. So we'll have to wait towards the end of the year to see if Canadian Tire also sees some dividend increases. But I just want to do a quick little recap on that because I think it's important as us dividend investors to see and to feel and experience our money growing uh, basically without us having to do anything. All right, guys, so last part of the video, I promise we're getting near the end here. Uh, since it is a monthly update, a monthly recap, these videos always tend to be long, but I like to kind of do a deep dive into things. Um, so here's a quick little update on the total return of all of our stocks. I'll zoom in here so you guys can see here. Uh, actually, we'll zoom in like that. That'll probably be pretty good. And we'll scroll over here so we can see the total return. Um, so this is going to show all the individual holdings across all of my accounts. This doesn't include my fiance's accounts. These are just my accounts. But we can see um, the difference between stock growth, dividend, um, dividends reinvested, total return of all of our stocks. And I'm using Wealthica. A lot of people ask me what tool I use to do this. This is Wealthica. It is a paid tool. Unfortunately, um, it's the only tool that I know of that actually shows this information. So that kind of sucks. But that's kind of just the way it seems to be for us Canadian investors. Um, I know some things are coming in the works to help fix that. So I do. Uh, we do have some surprises coming up over the next couple months. But um, we we'll, guys will have to wait and see on that. Uh, but anyways, we do have some cool little metrics here. We can see like on the right side here at the end here, we can see the stock growth value. So this is going to be how much I've gained from the, the stock growing over time versus when I bought it. Since I'm a long term investor, I don't really care about when to buy stocks. If I see the markets dipping or I see a, a stock go down, I might take advantage of it. I might put a little bit more money, but it doesn't matter whether the stock is up or down. I'm going to be buying it regardless. So that's an important point to just kind of keep in mind. But we can see here all the different stocks I have. It's, it's sorted by the biggest book holdings, so my biggest, largest holdings are at the top here. We can see the stock growth on the right side, and then we can see the total returns with dividend investing as well as dividend growth on the left side here. And this is gonna be the, the total return. This is the real return. This is not the real return. This on the left side is a real return because it takes everything into account, which is important, right? Um, so VFE, um, total return of 3.69%, and that uh, also jumped up because the recent growth and the last little shot up in the market happened there. VDY, uh, total growth, about 17%, doing pretty good. HYLD, we finally hit 0%. Um, remember when we were sitting at about negative 17, negative 20% with HYLD? Well, we just kept buying. We kept reinvesting those dividends. And look at that. We're almost at 0%. You know, who would have thought, you know, I, I'm saying that sarcastically, but, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that, you know, everybody was freaked out. Everybody's worried about, well, guys, I'm getting a 1.1% increase percentage growth in dividend every single month and if the markets recover or we see some growth this year i think we're going to get a nice good return from that but well once again the main purpose of hyld is not growth it's dividend income it's using the dividend income to basically do whatever i want to do with it so uh, just kind of keep that in mind but you know we bought a lot during the dip and it is a fund that's going to move with the market. So if the market goes back up, we'll see some increases. But that dividend yield is always there, regardless of that. Um, TD is the next one, seeing about 9.73% gain. Uh, ATD is my biggest earner from a percentage standpoint, but not from a money standpoint, because it's not my largest holding. But percentage-wise, it's up 32%, so it's obviously done really well. Algonquin is down negative 20, so we've seen actually quite a bit of increase. I think we're at one point negative 38%. 
So, you know, us putting some money in, we're getting a dividend payment soon, and the stock has went up. It, it did bounce back up. I think it got about 20, last time I checked, it was up, like up 26% from its negative 40 whatever percent drop. So we got half of that gain back. So obviously that helped things out, but we did buy a few shares here during the dip. And once again, it's a small holding. So, you know, whatever it does, it's not that big of a deal. But I do believe long term we, we will bounce out and we should see some growth from that. Um, just the question is like, when is that going to happen, right? CNR 4.65%, TELUS 1.51%, HDIV 3%, um, another covered call. Once again, kind of the Canadian markets kind of dipped quite a bit actually over the past, I think, month or so. Actually, we did see a bit of a dip in the Canadian markets. So that's why a lot of these um, Canadian stocks kind of are down a little bit. Some of them are, some of them aren't, but like I definitely have seen some of them drop a little bit. Fortis 10%. Uh, Manulife 13.39%. Um, and then here's my Loblaw holding that I finally got to Wealthica. Bad news is for some reason, I guess the company I use, Computer Share, or the company my employer uses, uh, for some reason, this the, the detailed information is in there. We can see the quant quantity, we can see the we can see the, the value, like the gain, but for some reason it's not showing everything. So I'm gonna have to see if I can figure out a way to fix that, because uh, that, that'll be kind of cool to add in there as well. But at least we can see the quantity amount in there. Uh, C&Q is going to be the next one, about 11% gain overall, Canadian Tire 10.97%, and then XEI um, about 1.58%, which is $1.46. Now the interesting thing about XEI, like I mentioned before, is we're taking the leftover income that I don't use from HYLD and HDIV, which mostly, mostly is just HYLD because they have $13,000, HDIV is $1,000, so it's not really giving that much. But we're basically taking the leftover income, throwing it into XEI, and then this is gonna help us grow as well. So any earnings we get from this, from XEI, is essentially earnings from HYLD. So you can think about like that. So that $1.46 that we got in earnings so far, it's gonna grow over time. You can add that onto the, the total earnings of HYLD here if you want. Obviously it, it's not much right now, but that's gonna add up and grow because we're funding that ETF with our distributions from HYLD. So I think it's important to count that as the total return. It's kind of like a little experiment I'm doing, but. Uh, and we're just using the dividend yield from our cover calls. We're not putting my own money into XCI just so it's 100% legit. I'm trying my best I can to do that, but hopefully you guys can kind of see how you can, you know, you can use cover calls, the income that you get in different ways to kind of have some flexibility inside your portfolio. But anyways, guys, I'm gonna be heading out here since this video is getting a little bit long, but I hope you guys enjoyed that. Once again, if you guys wanna check it out, you know, check out Wealthica. It's a cool little tool that you guys can kind of uh, do some um, deeper dives and kind of see the big, broader picture inside your portfolio. All right, guys, that, so that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like usual, guys, if you guys want to do me a favor, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys want to be notified of when I do these weekly updates. If you guys have any comments or want to share any thoughts, feel free to do so in the comment section. Take care. Have yourself a good week. I'll see you guys uh, in a little while as I will be going on vacation for a little while. So I'll see you guys probably within the next week or two. Uh, but anyways, take care. Have yourself a good one, and I'll see you guys later.